welcome to the Movie Chair Podcast. I am your host, AP, aka Mr. Movie Chair. And on today's episode of the Movie Chair Pod, it is the Batman spoiler discussion. That's right, the Batman spoiler discussion. Uh, I watched the the new Batman movie yesterday, uh, Friday, and uh, it was. I had well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go all in on details uh, in the headline topic later on in the show. But like I said, it is gonna be a spoiler discussion for today's. Batman movie, The Batman, and I, I kind of want to put this, I will say it again a, a bit later on in the show, but, you know, there is going to be heavy spoilers, it's going to be straight away all into spoiler discussions, I know maybe some people have not watched that on the first day, so I don't want to spoil that movie for you, don't expect non-spoilers here, if you've not watched The Batman as of yet, definitely uh, maybe pause this video, come back to this video, don't watch this video at all, uh, and enjoy the movie because it is going to be heavy, heavily filled with them spoilers, them juicy spoilers of the Batman on today's headline topic. I can't wait to dive into that. But before we get to today's headline topic of the Movie J podcast today, uh, I'm going to dive into the part of the show called Not So Worthy Blockbuster Housekeeping. This is the part of the show where uh, I, I discuss what's going on with the channel, with the community, and it's just an easing in uh, part of the show to get us ready for that juicy, hot topic of the Batman. Yes. So, uh, Not So Worthy Blockbuster Housekeeping for this week. Let's get into it. Uh, first of all, um, March monthly, monthly releases episode. Now this is like a running trend with the Movie J podcast of doing each and every month uh, an episode where uh, I look into um, what movie releases are coming out this month. I did say on last week's show, I believe that today's show would be a, a, a release episode as usual, the start of the month. Um, but I, I kind of just, I forgot, that, <laughs> I don't know why I forgot because it was a predictions episode last week of the Batman. Um, and this week... I wanted to do a full-on discussion of that movie because I know it was it was coming out and I just didn't think ahead too far. I, I, I should have because it was such a big movie. But yeah, so next week's episode will be the March monthly releases episode looking at all the movies coming out in March. Uh, so it's not being forgotten about. It's just been delayed by, by a week because... Uh, because it is such such a huge movie being released this week, The Batman. So next week's episode will be a, a March monthly releases episode. And uh, what else has been going on? Um, latest video this week on the on the YouTube channel. It was a bit of a different video. It was a Patreon teaser video. So um, I wanted to make a little teaser. I've done one of these ages ago, maybe like a year or so ago now, where I teased some of the content. On the Patreon side of things, you have the Movie Chair Podcast Patreon community, and you can sign up for one dollar if you want to become a member of that community. There's own bonus videos, bonus podcasts, and basically the teaser this week was teasing some of them. You know, them podcasts give you a bit of snippets of the podcast, the uh, the bonus videos, just to kind of get a, a bit of an, an insight to what is going on on the Patreon Patreon side of content. I discuss it each and every week, most of the time, anyway. So I thought, let's just give you a little bit of a video teaser. Uh, I want to be respectful of the Patreons on there already, of, of you know the the you know they're paying for that exclusive content and stuff like that. So I didn't want to show everything, show loads of content, but it's a 15 minute teaser. You can just get a, a bit of a gist of what is going on the Patreon side of things. It's kind of just an extension of what is going on here on the Movie Cheer Podcast YouTube channel. If you like the content here, uh, maybe you'll like that extra bit of content on there if you want it. It's you're not you don't have to get it, but it's there if you want. It, I always say that. Uh, but that's in the Patre the latest video this week. Uh, what else has been going on in Movie Cheer Town? Uh, what I will say we on the website uh, www www.freews www.moviecheerpodcast.com uh, an article this week's article the article I say article blog post uh, is a, a release about uh, buying physical movies in 2022 is are they worthwhile um this was kind of spawned from um from the article well, I've, I've seen a few articles very similar to this now 
um, mentioned to me by uh, Ben Rider Racer 18. And I, I mentioned this on a video that came out in February where it was like buying DVDs in 2022, are they worthwhile and stuff? And um, just, you know, the fact that like a lot of these main, big supermarkets here in the UK, Tesco, Sainsbury's are stopping the physical media sales of DVDs, Blu-rays in the shops now. And it seems like I, I watched them... Um, a video this past week of by Jeff at Films at Home, a great channel. If you've never checked out Films at Home, well worth checking out, superb channel. Um, but Jeff had a video on the discussing, I can't remember when the video was, it was one of his recent videos, but it was, he was mentioning it's kind of the same things happening in the US by the sounds of it, were a lot of like the big, like, like the Walmarts and a few of the big chain supermarkets over there, um, are doing the same thing as what we our UK ones are doing, where they're getting rid of the of the physical media shelves on DVDs and like uh, Blu-rays, 4Ks, and it's just going strictly strictly to online sales, if anything. Um, so that that seems like it's a running trend out across the world now. It's not just here in the UK; it's obviously it's across the in the states, in Canada, wherever else in the world as well, Australia. Um, it's definitely happening everywhere for sure. But I, I just wanted to give a, a bit more insight in, a, in an article in a written format uh, for this topic. And I feel like, like I said, I'm not a big writer. I don't, I'm not like a guy who's going to be able to write. I'm an awful writer, really. I'll be honest, with you. <laughs> really awful. I mean, you're probably going to be reading that. You'd be like, wow, this guy can't, he can't speak. He can't talk. He can't write. Uh, but it's, it's what I've offered. It's what I've offered to the, uh, to the discussion, the discussion of physical media and physical media sales in 2022. But if you're interested, check out that article. Let me know what you think on that topic in general. Uh, so that was the blog article on the moviechairpodcast.com website. Uh, what else is going on? Last bit of, uh, of not so worthy blockbuster housekeeping for this week. Uh, this week's episode of the podcast is the Batman spoiler discussion episode coming up this Monday on Patreon. Uh, it will be a bonus video, bonus video podcast. It'll be Movie Chair Pod Plus episode, and it will be an extension of today's episode discussing more uh, stuff related to uh, more topics related to the Batman movie and uh, just really digging a bit deeper into this topic with even more. Um, yeah, you know, talk, discussion on this great, great movie that came out this past week. Uh, but that's coming up on the Patreon on Monday. That is the not-so-worthy blockbuster housekeeping for this week's show over and done with. Let's get to the headline topic. So we are at the headline topic of today's show, the Batman spoiler discussion. As I said, there will be spoilers ahead for the Batman. This is another warning, so... Spoilers ahead for the Batman in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Spoilers ahead, ladies and gents. You have been uh, given the warning sign. Uh, so, let's get into this. Let's really do a deep dive into this movie. Uh, first of all, general general thoughts on the plot, uh, the film as a whole. How how was the experience? Our first, so let's, let's just uh, talk about the experience of, first of all, going to the cinema... Uh, I went and seen it yesterday, and it was like an afternoon showing, and I I had heard before that there was something about the age rating, and I wasn't sure what what was going on with the age rating. I didn't really look into it too much, to be honest. With you. I heard on the John Campier show that the the UK rating had been was a higher rating than the rest of the world, but I didn't really uh, know what the extent of that was. So I get to the cinema. And uh, I hadn't booked tickets or anything, and um, get to the cinema and the cinema. And the first time I've ever seen this in a cinema, I don't know if you have ever seen this before, but there was posters like printed out A4 sheets of paper, printed out, and it was on the front door, and it was saying the Batman. This is a notice about the Batman, basically saying uh, this movie is a 15 rated movie. Anyone under the age of 15, or if anyone cannot provide ID, they will not be allowed to go into this movie, and they can't go accompanied by adults even as well. Um, that was There was posters everywhere in the cinema, absolutely everywhere, and that just like, I, I was kind of blown away first of all by that, because I, I, I didn't... Um, I didn't realize it was it was there was an actual age rate. I thought if anything, it would have been 
maybe like a 12 and like you can be accompanied by an adult if you're a kid or you're a teenager. But I gotta imagine there's gonna be tons of families or tons of people, tons of kids maybe under the age of 15 who wanted to go and see it with their friends or with the parents who would have got to the cinema on that day and maybe just hadn't pre-booked tickets like myself and had got to the cinema and just been bombarded with them posters and been absolutely shocked that the fact they can't see the Batman at the cinema. Um, I think, look, I, I want to talk about the plot of the movie. I think I can understand why it is a 15. Um, there is a few moments very early on in the movie, very, very much at the start of the movie with the Riddler, where he is basically, you know, just smashing a guy's head in with this, uh, this like, this weapon. And it is quite graphic. I think it's not like gore. Well, it is, it's gore. I think it's just the nature of it. It's very, it's very graphic and very, you know, um, a lot of violence there. I could see that was definitely a point where I was thinking straight away, yeah, this is why this movie is a 15. That's why it's been given that age rating. And I think there was a scene as well when, and we've seen it in the trailers really, with Batman and he's, it's the the gang who are like kind of like the Joker esque gang. They've got all like the face paint on very early on in the film again, and this is probably what Batman's really real first appearance, I would say. And he is just destroying this gang, and he's beating them down, and he's just like plowing into them and with punches. And you just you don't really see him punching them. You just see you see the guy on the floor, and you just see the punches like the trailer. You don't see him actually on screen punching them. But again, it's very, very violent. I would say in in them aspects and them moments of the, of the movie, in comparison to to other Batman movies of the past, and that's obviously why it's been given the age rating over here in the UK. But it just, I find it confusing why why here in the UK it's been given a, an age fifteen. And uh, again, I don't know for sure what the age rating is in in the US and further afield. Uh, maybe I'll let us know about that. I'll have a look into that. But uh, it, we've been given an age fifteen rating. And uh, and if the rest of the world has been given a low rating, it seems a bit bizarre. I think it's maybe uh, I don't know. I I just think that's really crazy for for such a big. It's like Batman for me. I think Batman the character. It's such a a worldwide. You know, it's it's a character that just goes across the board for people. You don't have to be a comic book fan. Uh, you just have to. You know, people say Batman. People know what it is, the character, they know Bruce Wayne, they know his story, they know his villains, the Joker, the Riddler. It's like certain vill- certain like comic book stories, I mean, if you mention like Shazam to someone, they don't know, you know, the origins and stuff a lot. I think just general speaking, like just your dre- general film goers don't know everything about that character. But whereas Batman, it's just in the pop- popular public domain and uh, it's... For like I said, I think there's going to be. I imagine there was a ton. I, I would have. I should have asked them at the cinema to see if they had had any families go in there who just re- didn't realise that it was a fifteen and they couldn't take the kids in. I bet there was a ton of kids yesterday, a ton, ki- ton of kids, teenagers under the age of fifteen who were massively disappointed that they couldn't go and see uh, this film. I, I think it's. I would be good. I, I would honestly be good if I was a fifteen year old. Oh, sorry, if I was under 15, like 13, 14, and I couldn't have seen the Batman at the cinema, seen this, the trailers and everything for this film, I would have been really disappointed to not see that. But it is what it is, I suppose. It is what it is. But anyway, uh, that's my uh, f- thoughts on the ra- age rating, but thoughts on the film as a whole. Wow. Um, this is truly uh, a very different story, very different movie to uh, previous Batman incarnations. It is very much what has been teased by the director, Matt Reeves, as saying it's more of a direct, it's a, more of a, a detective story showing the, the Batman as this great, the world's greatest detective. And uh, it's basically, you know, the the premise of the story is, is, is this, you know, the Riddler is the main villain. Batman's in his second year now as, as, as the Batman Bruce Wayne. And the Riddler is trying to get rid of all the corruption in Gotham City. So basically, 
politicians, uh, the police, everyone is basically corrupt. It's the same old, same old with Gotham. Everyone is always corrupt in, in Gotham. Half of the police force is all corrupt. Uh, they're all in syndication with the crime bosses of the of Gotham City. But the Riddler wants, he's playing mind games and he's like, he's murdering people. He's murdering this high profile people like politicians. Early on in the movie, he kills the mayor of Gotham. And then this is where the plot continues, where he, he wants to reveal this rap. Basically, when the, the, the Riddler was younger, uh, Edward, Edward, is it Edward Nash, Ed Nashton? Uh, basically, he was an orphan and Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, was running for mayor at the time. And he promised this renewal fund, this fund that would continue even if he didn't become mayor. And um, basically, this fund would help the orphanages and help kids in the city. Basically, he he gets killed, Thomas Wayne, prior to the elections. And um, basically, that renewal fund then becomes a fund for all the crime syndicates of, of Gotham City. And basically, the crime bosses take hold of this fund. And this is where the corruption starts in Gotham, where you see the police forces basically are basically led in cohesion with the crime bosses of Gotham and you see where like Carmine Falco Falcone uh, Falcone is very much at the spearhead of that and we see obviously that come to light at this at the end of the movie but basically the Riddler is you know Thomas Wayne is killed Martha Arkham Martha Wayne his parent Bruce Wayne's parents are killed and at the time, it's kind of like taken away from all the other orphans. And it's like the focus is on the one sole orphan of Gotham. And it is Bruce Wayne. And he, the Riddler, feels, you know, really angry by that. He is so disgust, disgusted in that. And the fact that the renewal fund, this fund that was meant for this orphanage that he was in, and all the orphans there at his home were all basically forgotten about after the death of the Waynes. And... This is where he he feels just this anger towards the to the rich, to the to Bruce Wayne, to everyone in Gotham who has power, and he wants to basically reveal to the the truth to Gotham that Gotham, that Gotham is corrupt and that the renewal fund was taken over by corruption within the city, and that the city is run by gangsters and by crime bosses. And this is the whole plot of this movie. He just basically wants to bring to the light that Carmine Falcone is the spearhead of all of this and basically he's, he's the real guy who is running Gotham City. And it comes to a spearhead at the end where Falcone is killed by the Riddler. Uh, he, you know, the truth is revealed, the corruption in the city is revealed in the end and then Paul Dano's Riddler is sent to prison. But Batman visits him in prison then and it's basically... He, he thinks him and Batman are working together. He's clinically insane, the Riddler. And he thinks him, him and the Batman. And Batman's like, we're not friends. We're not working together. And then Riddler's like, yeah, we are. And then he starts singing Ave Maria, which is, he just sings it dead crazily. Paul Dano, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to get into his performance a bit later on in the show. But um, then he reveals, his, you know, he has one final master plan. And basically it is to blow up like these seven the seven of these lorries around Gotham's uh sort of like the district of Gotham where all the flood floodgates of Gotham are. So he blows up all these vans while he's in prison and then all of Gotham gets flooded. It's like literally a massive flood in Gotham City. Uh, Gotham and then you know Batman goes to save the day. But basically while the Riddler is in prison prison he has been working on like the dark web to get all these little, these other crazy light people like him and he builds up a Riddler army. So you see in like in the the, the end location where it's, it looks like some sort of like hall where they're doing this big press conference for the new mayor of Gotham City and about six or seven Riddlers all, all dressed in the same Riddler outfit that Paul Dano's Riddler is dressed in. And they've all got the same mask, all the same suit. They've got guns and they're shooting from above. They're shooting the mur, They're shooting civilians. And this is all happening while the floodgates are coming in. And he wants to just basically destroy Gotham. Wipe it clean of all its corruption, basically. It's a, you know, 
typical villain master plan. He just wants to wipe the slate clean. He wants to, you know, cleanse Gotham essentially with this massive flood. Um, Batman comes to the to the save. He beats all these Riddlers down with the help of uh, Catwoman in the end. And then we see him save Gotham. But, you know, at the end of it, it's like revealed that the National Guard has to be c come in for to help the people of Gotham because it was just a massive flood in the city. Um, overall, I, I I love this film. I think it was, again, very different from movie movies like The Dark Knight, The Batman Begins, The Batman vs. Superman. Would I say it's like a realistic take? Um, I, I think, for me, I would say The Dark Knight was more realistic. It felt like more grounded. Um, that take, the Christopher Nolan, Chris, Christian Bale uh, incarnation of this character and this story. For me, watching this movie, from the start, the word go, where you get like, there's a, like a monologue at the start where it's basically Bruce Wayne doing his diary, talking about his nights as Batman, he's logging it all, and same at the, the, the end of the film. But it felt like, throughout this movie, like a very dark graphic novel, a very, like a Batman, like a year one um What's the other one? The, uh, the the is it the Laughing Joe? I can't remember what it's called now. But it, it felt like that very like eighties uh, Batman comic, really dark, really gritty. It didn't feel like it was for me. It it didn't feel like it was set in a realistic world. It felt like it, it felt like more like a, a Watchmen like world. It felt very comic book, but like a dark comic book. It's not like a like a happy Marvel-esque comic. It's really gritty. Um whereas I feel like the like like I said, the Dark Knight trilogy was more a sense of realism and a sense of ground. You know, this is more set in a grounded universe, a, a more realistic universe. A guy basically a millionaire, a billionaire who gets all these fancy toys. You know Bruce Wayne in this, he's kind of like working solo, basically, on all his gear, and apart from Alfred. But um, yeah, I thought it was really gritty, very very Watchmen-esque feel to this film. But uh, honestly, I, I loved it. I, from top to bottom, I, I know it's a very different movie, uh, this detective story, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great story. I, I thought it was really fun. Um, really, Maybe you could say it was slow in paces, but... I, I just I really enjoyed the slow build throughout this story and getting like the dialogue the you know the anticipation of what's going to happen next. It's just that I think it was a really good story and a really really cool film. Uh, next, let's talk about the Riddler, uh, Paul Dano's Riddler. What did I think of his character? Um, I thought he was exceptional. I thought he was really good. I think with with the mask on, he was very much. For me, uh, Heath Ledger Joker. He, he reminded me so much of Heath Ledger's Joker. It's just this insane guy doing this insane voice. Uh, a lot of these like video messages, you know, doing live streams, which made me draw the comparisons to Heath Ledger's Joker when he would do them sort of like similar things. The videos he was sending, the videos to the news, and it was very reminiscent of that for me. Um, with the mask off, it felt like a different character almost when he was in when he was in Arkham Asylum and Batman visited him he was just seemed very different and he seemed like a man who was truly insane he was just like he'd lost the plot and he was like he was it was like he loved Batman he he, he was in the door of Batman and then when he found out that Batman didn't want to be his friend and he didn't it's like he he actually thought that Batman was working with him and, you know, he thought he had killed, you know, his main, his end goal was to kill Bruce Wayne. And, you know, that's what he reveals to Batman at the end. And, you know, Batman is worried of him because he thinks, oh, maybe he knows my true identity. But then he says, like, oh, I didn't get to kill Bruce Wayne. And then it's kind of like that's implied that he doesn't know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Um, I, I like that because it kind of, you know, keep the mystery about who Batman is early on in this trilogy. But yeah, I think he was a really good villain, uh, a really convincing villain. And again, it adds to this dark, like gritty graphic novel style character. It's very a comic booky vibe to this universe. I think it fitted in well. Really different uh, version of the character compared to versions we've had before with like the likes of Jim Carrey. Um, it's very, it's night and day. But I, I really enjoyed it and I hope to see more of Paul Dano 
in future Batman movies as well. Um, let's move on to you know Batman, the portrayal of Batman, Bruce Wayne by Robert Patterson. Look, I I I think I at first when I heard about this guy, the guy who'd done the Twilight movies, he was now going to be playing Batman. I was a bit worried, but he was great uh, as this this version of Batman in his second year as a crime fighter, as this vigilante, and. Basically, he's more of a detective. He's, you know, he's wearing these contact lenses. He's recording everything going on. He's trying to find these clues that the Riddler is setting throughout Gotham to to find out who the Riddler is and who the Rat is. It is later revealed it is Fal- uh, Falcone. But I, I really think Robert Patterson's Batman was was fantastic. I, I enjoyed, you know, the scenes. The fight scenes were great with him. But I think his portrayal it, in this movie it felt like he was more the Batman rather than Bruce Wayne. I feel like we get a, a very limited uh, opportunity to see Bruce Wayne. And when we did see him, like in the funeral scenes, it was very limited. We didn't really see that much of Bruce Wayne. He's not like this, to me in this, in this universe, he is not this like playboy character. He's not a character with much charisma, really. He, he seems very, you know, very drawn back, very stoic at times. And it's like, he's more, in, invested in being the Batman in this world, and um, I, I think I think it would. I think it worked better because it really just truly gave us, you know, a Batman movie. This was a Batman movie. It wasn't a ba- a Batman and Bruce Wayne, um, and I I really enjoyed Robert Pattinson's portrayal. Uh, where does he stand? You know, I think Ben Affleck for me was a great Batman. I really enjoyed his version of Batman. I thought he was great. It's very different. It's a very different story. Into I, I think, whereas like the Christian Bale ones and the Ben Affleck versions, the more you know, more recent versions of Batman, were more like action orientated. And I, I suppose Christian Bale's version, the Christopher Nolan series, tried to do that route of this like detective story a bit more. But I feel like they still were, were led by you know, big action set pieces more so, and like this Batman who was like an action fighting these different characters. Whereas Robert Pattinson's Batman, you know, he's, he's going to these crime scenes, he is more, it feels like he was more an investigator, a detective in this story. And I liked it, I, I really enjoyed it. I think Rob, Robert Pattinson's a great Batman, and I can't wait to see the character evolve over the next uh, two, two or three movies, or how many movies we get in long run, who knows? So we had the the Batman in this movie. We had the Riddler. We had the Penguin. Uh, the Penguin. I, I I thought Colin Farrell was great in, as the Penguin as well. Catwoman. But we also had another villain at the end of this movie, and that villain is the Joker. That's right, the Joker. He returns a new version of the Joker, played by Barry Keoghan, who you would know. He played Eternals character Druig. He was also in Dunkirk. Apparently, he was in the Green Knight as well. Uh, I believe he's an Irish actor. And uh, Barry Keoghan was rumored to be playing a character called Stanley Merkel. I think he was meant to be a police officer. Obviously, that was just... um, you know, they thrown that out there, it was all false. It was heavily rumoured that he was going to be playing the Joker. I think his brother sent out like a tweet or something saying my brother's playing the Joker months ago and it got deleted straight away. And that's where it started to spoil the rumours of Barry Keoghan was potentially playing the Joker in this movie. Uh, we see very little of him. It's very You see like a, a glimpse of his face, basically. The end scene is the Riddler is in, is in Arkham Asylum and... Um, he, he's in Arkham now at the end of the movie and then you see him in the cell he's going crazy and then you see you hear this voice in this other cell and he he gives the guy he gives the riddler a riddle and he says the less of these you have the more one is worth and then the riddler says a friend so you you, you, you get it like in, in this Irish accent it's like uh, Barry Coat the less uh, the less these the less of these you have the more one is worth like that. <laughs> he doesn't sound like that. But um, but basically, then you see him then do the Joker laugh, and you see a glimpse of his hair. He's he's like the scars, and you know it's the Joker. I know at the end of the movie, it's it's in this in the end credits, he is listed as unseen Arkham prison mate or something like that. But Matt Reeves, the director, has come out and now revealed that he is playing the Joker. So. 
is is the Joker going to feature in the future movies? Is is the next movie going to be the Joker and the Riddler team up? Um, I think it's you know it, it's it's bound to happen as in the next movie. I think at least uh, you're going to get something of the Joker. Is he going to be the main villain in the next one? Maybe not. Maybe they're going to reveal him to be the main villain in the third movie. But um, yeah, Barry Keoghan's uh, Joker is going to feature in this Batman universe. And uh, it's cool. And this this takes me to the, like, again, the point of like, this is, it doesn't feel, it feels like a very, um, at times, like a very comic book-esque movie um, at times, even with a gritty feel, but, you know, with a Joker. And, you know, I love this, like, you've got these two villains, these two villains who, you know, dr- dress up. They're in the same prison in Arkham Asylum. And they meet in, in like, cells. They're at opposite cells. I just, I, I love that as a movie fan, as a comic book fan. It's it's cool, and you get the the laugh the of the Joker at the end, and he's like, "Hello, baby, hello, Riddler. Let's be friends. Let's be friends. I'm I'm the Joker." He doesn't say he's the Joker, but we all know it's the Joker, and the director's confirmed it anyway. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing. I I look. They just teased it. I I love it because now that is the best tease for any type of movie, especially for a character like the Joker. Uh, whether you get sick of the character or not, I I. Personally, I, I'm happy to see another version of the Joker, another incarnation. I think it's going to be exciting, and and the tease now it's just like, I'm like, whoa, what what are they going to do in the next movie? Is he going to be in that movie? And what's his Joker? I mean, is this Joker already had an altercation with the Batman? Is that why he's in prison? Has he ever met the Batman? Is he is he the Joker yet? You know, he might not actually be the Joker as of yet. He could be. This could be an early an early point in the Joker's career and maybe he's he's got another, another name before this and now he, he is discussing things with the Riddler in prison and then he you know he thinks I'm gonna have a name like the Riddler I'm gonna be the Joker we don't know and uh, that's what I really enjoy about this movie and the ending in particular I thought it was a really uh, good ending and a good tease for the what's to come in this universe Um. I want to I want to end this headline topic though with favorite scenes of this movie. I think there's two two main scenes that I, I really enjoyed. And first of all, I will say the police station escape. So Batman is being reprimanded by the police, and he's got loads of police around him. And then she, uh, Jim Gordon takes him outside, and he says, "Like I'm going to calm him down." And then he's like whispering to him, "Punch me in the face, take the key, get out of here." Batman punches him in the face, grabs the key, and all the police in the station are just chasing him around the station. He gets his hook and he, he just shoots up and he goes through like all the levels of the police station to the rooftop. And then you see Batman on the rooftop and he just he gets his cape out. And I think is it called Spelunkin or something like that? I remember it's in um Tron Legacy where they do that, where he does like a skydive with no no parachute or anything. He's got like his suit, his cape from the top of the roof, and he just jumps down and you see like a like a first person view of Batman jumping down and going through the streets and gliding in this suit. And I, I love that. I just love it when all the police are, ch- are chasing him and then he just jumps off the roof. It was just high, uh, high octane, high energy uh, action scene. I loved it. Another favorite scene of mine, and I imagine it is a lot for a lot of people, the car chase between the penguin and the Batman. That car chase uh, was amazing. It was, you know, it must have been a five minute car chase sequence where the Batman is chasing down the penguin to try and, you know, to try and question him because he thinks he is the rat at this point in the movie, but he reveals he is not the rat. And, but it's, you know, it goes onto this big highway and this, you know, there's a big crash and the penguin thinks he is, he's got rid of the Batman. Then you see like a ramp appear and the Batman just jumps through in his car, smashes through this big explosion and at this point, the bat, the penguin is like, I got you, I got you. And he's like, and he just sees the car come through these flames. And he's like, oh my God. And then the Batman just revs him up and just smashes his car to the side of the road. And then he takes him down and questions him. But that scene is phenomenal. The music in the scene, it just, it really fuels me up. It, re- it really uh, revs me up for a car chase. I loved it. Uh, it was a great scene. Well shot, well, uh, I mean, that must have been amazing to film. To see that being filmed, I don't know how much of it was like digitally done or it was an actual car chase, but it was absolutely phenomenal. I really enjoyed that. But yeah, overall, 
um, let's just end this as a whole, you know. This film, if you have not watched it yet, and maybe you have watched this this uh, discussion today, watch it. Get it watched, because it is a phenomenal movie, whether you're watching it at home, in the future, on a, on a, on a video on demand release, or you watch it at a cinema, but get it watched at some point. It's a phenomenal movie. Uh, also let me know what your thoughts are on the movie uh, if you enjoyed it as much as I did I thought it was a spectacular film to watch so now the headline topic is over for today's show let's move on to another section of the show and this part of the show is called movies for the weekend this is where I give you some movie recommendations for this weekend uh, so first off with you know tying into the Batman movie, and we had Andy Serkis playing Alfred Pennyworth in that movie, and this brings me back to another great performance from Andy Serkis, and that is in Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. Not, not really my favourite Lord of the Rings movie, but I think you know him as Gollum is is great, great performance from him, and uh, I, I love him. I think he's a great character in that movie, and I really enjoyed him in, as Alfred in, in the Batman movie. So well worth checking out this weekend. Uh, really uh, epic fantasy movie uh, next movie i want to discuss is is a kurt russell movie called soldier um kind of discuss you know one of my you know favorite kurt russell movies would be like the escape from new york movies and um, escape from la but i mean soldier is apparently this one is meant to be like a a spiritual successor to blade runner it's meant to be set in that universe like a, but it's not done by the same I, um, people who the creators but basically it's a, a spiritual movie set in the Blade Runner universe apparently but a really good movie soldier uh, if you like Kurt Russell movies if you, if you like like action sci-fi movies you'll like this film well worth checking out uh, but they are the movies for this weekend for this week now we're going to move on to the monthly set the monthly segment of the uh, Movie Cheer podcast, and it is the Home Theatre Snack mo monthly recommendation. Uh, this is where I give you my monthly recommendation on Home Theatre Snacks, and my recommendation for this month is Swizzles Originals Love Hearts. Love Hearts. These are these like small little candy sweets where it's like they just like a, like a sherbetty like sweet. They're vegan. They're free from artificial colours. And they just, you know, they're, they're really kind of like hard at first, but when you crack them down, they are really super soft and they're very like a like a very sugary, powdery, sweet. But um, I really enjoy Love Arts. I think they're great. And they are my movie uh, monthly recommendation on the home theater snack for this month of March. Now let's move on to the Amazon top 10 for this week on the Movie Cheer pod. And uh, the Amazon Top 10 is, part of this, this part of the show is where we look at the Amazon Top 10 bestsellers for DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks, physical media sales of this week. What is on the Amazon Top 10 this weekend? We have at number 10, we have Ghostbusters Afterlife, the DVD release. At number 9, we have the DVD of No Way Home, Spider-Man No Way Home. It's not out just yet, but you can pre-order that at the moment. At number 8, we have West Side Story DVD. I'm not too sure whether that's been released yet. That was the Steven Spielberg-directed West Side Story. At number 7, we have The King's Man. I believe that is out now, I think. Uh, that's at number 7. At number 6, we have No Time to Die on Blu-ray. At number 5, we have the DVD release of Dune. At number 4, we have the Blu-ray release of Dune. And number three, we have the Blu-ray of Spider-Man No Way Home. Number two is the DVD of No Time to Die. And then at number one, we have the DVD release of Encanto, the Disney movie Encanto, the movie of the month for the Movie Cheer podcast for last month. Great movie, well worth checking out. But that is the Amazon Top 10 over for today's show. Let's move on. Uh, to the final segment of today's episode, and it is what's been on the screen, what's been on the screen this past week. Um, I will mention two movies, two movies briefly, but um, basically I had a Sebastian Stan, Sebastian Stan movie session this week, and I watched, first of all, I watched I, Tonya, the biopic of Tonya Harding, an ice skater, figure, figure skater, starring Margot Robbie as Tonya Harding, and Sebastian Stan as as the husband of Tonya Harding. Uh, this is basically the events of this. I, I watched a documentary maybe a couple of months back, and 
I, I didn't know the story before then, but the story is basically uh, a, a figure skater was attacked and Tonya Harding was this like up and coming figure skater at the time. And one of her rivals was attacked before the Olympics and like the, someone broke her leg or broke her ankle or whatever. And basically it was revealed then that Tonya Harding was, had some sort of, um, some sort of a hand in this attack on this figure skater. And it's all unfolds within this movie and Sebastian Stan, her husband is, is involved in this. Uh, I think, I don't know if I'm like, it's Margot Robbie. I, I like her as a performer. I don't really like her as, as Harley Quinn. I, I, in that role, I'm not a massive fan of Harley Quinn. But I, I think she's an, a decent decent actress, uh, Margot Robbie. I don't think she's one of my favourite actresses of all time, actors. Uh, but for me, this movie is saved by a great Sebastian Stan performance. I think Sebastian Stan really saves this movie, and I think he is a great performer in this movie. I don't think it's the world's best movie and the world's best biopic, but I think Sebastian Stan's performance is worth checking out this movie for. Um, I think he is slowly becoming one of my, well, not slowly, but I mean, just looking back at his movie, Sebastian Stan, who plays the Winter Soldier, uh, Bucky Barnes, he is becoming one of my most favourite actors of maybe the last five or ten years. He is really up there as actors. I, th- I think he's really a, go- a fantastic performer. I-, I really like a lot of his films that he's in. Uh, yeah, so that was I, Tonya. Well worth, it's worth, if you like biopics, um, it's not really a sports movie. It's more about the event, this event going on where this figure skater is attacked and it's, you know, finding out who did it and it's like a who done it kind of like, and really, but you you kind of know who's done it, but you don't know the true, the, like the truth behind it and what's really going on. And it's it's kind of a, a bit of a, like a movie that unfolds throughout the story and you see this mystery of what happened and the true the true events of really what happens, but it's, yeah, it's worth checking out. I think if you if you like a biopic, I'd check I check it out. But just for Sebastian Stan's performance, I'd work, definitely check it out. Um, the next movie I rewatched was The Winter Soldier, another Sebastian Stan movie. I've not watched it in a while now, but just I forgot how good this movie is, and it kind of like looking at the the Batman today and great villains and that Winter Soldier in that movie, him as the Winter Soldier. And the the relationship between the like the relationship between him and Steve Rogers, it is phenomenal. And I forgot how good, how great that movie is, and his performance in that. And it's weird seeing him as this big time villain in this movie to see them where he moves forward with like the recent you know Falcon and Winter Soldier TV show and his performances in the other movies as well. Uh, it's a great movie, great action. Sp- you know, set pieces are really a kind of like a spy thriller movie, you know, this spy action movie. It is a great film, and uh, I, I really, you know, I, I liked, rewatched the recent, you know, the first Captain America, and I, I on the rewatch, I enjoyed that a lot more. Winter Soldier is definitely, I think even more than Civil War, I love Winter Soldier. I think it's just a, a classy movie. It's just like, you don't look at it as like a comic book movie at times. You look at it, it feels like a real like there's a lot of like high stakes drama and you feel the realism and it's like it really an intense story throughout and it's a movie well worth rechecking out if you've not watched it in a while check out the winter soldier for sure but yeah uh, sebastian stan though again two great performances there from him he is really i think he's probably in my top three of actors at this moment in time i, I really enjoy his performances i think he's a world-class actor um but anyway that's what's been on the screen this week um and that is it for today's show uh if you enjoyed today's show if you watched it on youtube uh please do give it a like and leave a comment and your thoughts on today's topics of the of the batman discussion today if you've been listening along on a podcast app of your choice uh please do subscribe to the podcast on your podcast if you're not already and leave a review as well the review helps uh, helps the community to grow, helps the podcast to grow uh, even further afield, and I appreciate all your support. But yeah, let me know all your thoughts on today's episode. What did you think of the Batman? If you went to see it yet, what did you think of the age rating as well? If you watch it in the UK, um, what were your favourite scenes in this movie? What did you think of the Riddler? Was he your favourite villain of the Batman franchise of, of every Batman movie so far? Was he better than Heath Ledger's Joker? 
What did you think of Robert Pattinson's portrayal? And did Matt Reeves deliver the best Batman movie of all time? Let me know all your thoughts, everyone. Uh, remember to spread a bit of movie cheer. And as always, I will see you next time.